Hello, Doofing here again, coming to you not from the cockpit of a MiG-21, but rather from a C-101CC. I am in an active dogfight now, and I am about to waste a missile here. Um, this video is going to be things I wish I knew about the C-101CC before I bought it. Um, just want to show one of the demonstrations here of what is good about the C-101CC. I am way inside this MiG-21's turn circle, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Fox 2. And splash. And he's down. Alright, so first thing I wish people knew about the C-101CC is about the fuel system here. This seems to be systemic. Nobody on YouTube seems to realize just how much fuel capacity this bird has. Um, the dog fight it with 10% fuel against another plane with 10% fuel and it's just incorrect and I'd like to show you why. So I'm going to gas up here. Get about 75%. Request refueling. I'm going to watch you come up now. Request rearming. That round gauge is in thousands of pounds of fuel. Uh, planes typically have a lot of fuel, but this one has more fuel than what you would think for a little plane like this. So that red light that turned green and then those two on the opposite sides are the left, right, and center fuel tanks. Now that is not in addition to the main tank. Um, these are separate. They're more like the droppable uh, fuel tanks that you have on a lot of these other planes, but just they're internal to the wing and so you can't drop them. So it was intended to fly from the south of Spain all the way down to the Canary Islands with a load and fly back. Um, that is actually quite a long range. What we're seeing here is borrowed from the Chuck's Guide. It shows our three wing fuel tanks and the main tank. Uh, it's going to drain from the left and right tanks into the center tank and then into the center tank into the fuselage tank. And so what we're going to see here is the center left and right wing tanks uh, showing that they have fuel in them and pressure. Uh, that FUS is, shows the amount of fuselage fuel or how much fuel is in the fuselage tank. Um, Typically, 1,000 pounds is about the minimum I would take off with, and 2,000 is probably as, as much as I would need for most complete. missions. This is my fuel flow gauge. Now, why I'm showing you that, let me show this off, is that uh, I'm going to spool up the engine, and I'm going to show um, the difference in fuel flow with the military reserve power, the MPR, on and off. Uh, these three vertical gauges are my engine gauges. The, the N1, so the primary compressor, the N2 at the bottom is the secondary compressor. This one in the center is the temperature in between the two turbines, the inter-turbine temperature. And as you see it full throttle, and I'm pretty much at the top of the gauge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the MPR on and it's going to jump off of that gauge. Uh, MPR almost is another 50% in terms of fuel consumption at the top of the engine range there. Um, with the C101CC model you can leave the MPR on indefinitely. You just go through a lot more fuel for not a whole lot of benefit. So in my opinion it's better to take less fuel and leave the MPR off. Uh, but you'll see that the NPR is handy sometimes, uh, much like an afterburner, kind of a weak afterburner. I uh, just spool down here. Okay, if anybody likes to submit a bug report, that flag never gets pulled on if a um, 
auto start. Uh, it's just annoying. It's for the uh, it's shattering the, uh, the the windshield tool. Um, yeah, it's another pet peeve of mine is the taxi and landing lights. There, you saw them under the wing. That's how you turn them off. I see a lot of really good YouTubers. Yeah, leave them on. They create noise in the cockpit and additional drag, and this thing's already slow enough. Uh, you can set one or the other on or off. It's real easy. Uh, the up position is the correct position. The gun sight is another pet peeve of mine. Uh, I wish I knew about this earlier. That is the seat height adjustment. So I'm going to bring the seat height down to where I can see the pipper. Uh, that's my personal preference. Another annoyance that I have is that the gun safety and the weapon safety can't be disengaged from inside the cockpit. It has to be bound to a HOTAS. Um, another thing I wish I knew more about before buying this module was the radio and navigation by uh, ra radio aids in DCS. Um, this has a complete suite for uh, VHF nav, for ADF, uh, for ILS. Uh, yeah, the, it's just a very fully featured module that uh, I really, really like in that in terms of practice for some of the other ones. Uh, that is a uh, IFF setup, and that is for the uh, navigation computer um, you can get down here and you can set the magnetic declination um, for the different environments you have north south and then you've got your yeah your declination setting there uh, it's a really well featured fully featured cockpit it's it's a really I have to say fantastic it's uh, yeah a lot of these things are just it's so well thought out and uh, I just haven't seen any other modules with a lot of that uh, so readily available uh, at least by the user the IFF of course isn't modeled yet uh, but it's present another thing that I wish people knew about this module is the cockpit lighting is absolutely fantastic now in this particular setting it's hard to appreciate um, but it yeah I'll have to show you some of the other mod and some of the other videos it's just fantastic um, absolutely superb I wish I knew that before buying it all right so here I have a c101 CC loaded to the gills here. I've got the, the heaviest the, the Sea Eagle missiles I can find. I've got 450 kilogram cluster bombs. I've got the Magic 550 missiles and a full tank of gas. I even have a co-pilot in the back seat. There's really no way to make this bird any heavier. Uh, what I'm like to demonstrate to you is the takeoff roll. I... Well, I'm going to irritate my crew chief here for a second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tow brakes to steer onto the runway here. That's another thing is there's no nose wheel steering. Uh, the only method of steering is differential braking. Uh, I've come to appreciate that in this module and that I can steer on the takeoff roll with the rudder if I'm above a certain speed and then I can use the brakes below a certain speed. It's just it's uh, more manual control. All right, so I have one of the longest runways in DCS here at Guam. I am severely overloaded, and I'm going to show that this is not a problem for even the slow, underpowered C101CC. All right, so I've got my trim tabs set there for takeoff trim. That's a whole lot of nose up trim. I'm going to set my flaps to full flaps for this particular takeoff. And I see there's my flap lever down there. That's how you mess with it when you're in cockpit. 
All right. So here we go. Spool up here, get straightened out. I think I'm going to use some the military reserve power here just because you're so overloaded. Alright, NPR is on. Also, you have to bind that to the cockpit or the HOTAS. There's no way to turn that on if it's not bound to something. Alright, so as I'm picking up speed here, um, let's see, thing to watch is that speedo just to the left of the artificial horizon. Uh, I'm going to, when I'm under a, a combat load, usually I'm not going to be able to really take off before 140. Um, I know it says roll at like 110 or 120, something like that. 140 is my normal takeoff speed here. Let's see if being massively overloaded changes that. Come up on 140, I'm going to rotate. And I'm kind of rotating and I'm off. Oh, look at that. Alright. Kind of 143 kind of thing. Gear up. And I'm up and off. That's... I'm impressed. <laughs> I didn't think it would be that easy. All right, so flaps to the mid position. Trying to keep positive rate here. Yeah, she's heavy. So let's see, on the left there is my angle of attack gauge, and I am high. Oof. All right. But yeah, I'm up and off. That's the stick shaker. That's the uh, that is a motor that actually sends a uh, unbalanced weight to knock my stick around so they let me know that I'm, a, I'm close to a stall condition. Let's see, got my missiles. Yep. Got my bombs. Yep. Alright. A full tank of gas. This is great. I'm going to muck with the, uh, the bombs here. Um, just to prove a point here. I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. All right, so the scar panel is not configured correctly for the bomb. Let me select my bombs first. Yeah, there we are. Selecting bombs. All right, so that's bombs. I'm going to take one over to the ripple mode here. Set the ripple for the most amount of time there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take also a set for bombs. And this is a really big new mistake here, so I'm going to drop the bombs. I'm going to follow them down. These are cluster bombs, big uh, Russian 450 kilogram cluster bombs. And nothing. And you don't want to know why? So I did not arm them. Alright, going back into the cockpit. Alright, down on the lower scar panel. Uh, I did not, they were set to safe, though. That's nose and tail, tail, and yeah, so if it had been set there, it would have, they would have gone off. Alright, so next up is the Sea Eagle missiles. I'm just going to get rid of those because they're heavy. Uh, I'm going to use the rocket fusing uh, for that. I'm just going to that's how they're fired. All right, see no error on the uh, scar panel up top. And ooh, there it goes. And it's so heavy on one side because I just fired the one. That's <laughs> got. Ooh, all right. Yeah, that is heavy. I'm way out of balance. All right, there we go. There we go. Way sea eagle. Sadly, the Sea Eagles don't work yet. Uh, they only work in the mission editor when you assign a target in the mission editor uh, for the Sea Eagles. Uh, they should track on their own. They have a built-in radar and their own jet engine. They should just, you should just be able to point them and 
let them loose and they should find their own targets. Uh, we are still waiting for that to be implemented even though this is a out of early access module. The last thing I'd like to demonstrate about this bird is just how remarkably easy this is to land. So I'm coming in, I'm not coordinated, I'm not really uh, lined up for miles, I'm just going to freehand it in on here, onto this uh, runway here from you know a very short final and uh, yeah this is this is something that I wish people could appreciate more about this module is that it is very forgiving very easy even I can do this uh, so I'll just let you watch here as I bring it on in Coming in here, just watching my VSI, just trying to keep the, uh, as I'm dialing the throttle back, just trying to keep the, the nose to where I'm getting a uh, 140 knots, and I'm just going to float it on down here. This is really remarkably easy, and I'm down. Uh, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe, and uh, I will be back with more of these types of things. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see next, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.